STL Slicer is a program used for opening up STL files and then cutting them into smaller pieces in order to be more easily created on different devices such as CNC or 3D printers. Uh, in this tutorial I'll kind of go through the menu system and uh, we'll slice up an object to demonstrate its capabilities. We'll start with when you uh, when you open the program you'll see this screen and it'll be blank and we'll have some tools here and you click on the icon, this is a file icon, it will give you some options for opening, uh, loading a new file or saving or opening up recent files and then exporting and uh, about as well. The about is where you'll click and tell you what your, your license number is and things like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and click load and we'll pick a model here, Zombie Hunter Head. This is a model I downloaded from thingiverse.com. It's just a free uh, STL sharing site. I'll click on that. We'll open this up. Alright, so we've got uh, several tools here. Uh, you've got your select tool, which allows you to you know, click and move things around. Uh, you've got a rotate tool, which allows you to just free rotate. A pan tool, which allows you to pan back and forth. And then a zoom tool. All of these tools can be uh, done just through mouse clicks as well. So you can use your middle button to rotate and then you can scroll to, to go back and forth. And you can also just click on this cube to rotate things around as well. And you'll notice when the model comes in, Z is facing forward. If you double click on that pane, it will snap to whatever direction that you click on. So we want to always have Z facing forward as our reference direction because that's the direction with which any of these machines is going to be creating in, whether it's carving, cutting, uh, printing, everything's going to be referenced from the Z direction. So we've got these other tools here. These tools are rotational tools. So I want to orient this model so that you know I've got the area that I want referenced in the Z direction facing me in that direction. So I can rotate the model along its axis points here as indicated on these. Then I can also rotate it uh, along the center. And then I've also got just a, uh, the ability to flip it 180 degrees all the way around. And then with all these things I can just reset it if I want to go back to my starting point uh, before I've done any of that rotational stuff. Uh, the next thing here is the import dimensions. So some models are created in millimeters or even uh, centimeters uh, and depending on what you're doing you may want to the system to remember what those units are uh, and so you can you can set that here. Uh, it, you've also got this ability here to flip normals. So if your model is pink like this it means that it's actually inside out and uh, so if your model comes in this way you've got this button here that you can click to invert the normals and put it right by right side out so when it's uh, the right side it should have this kind of beige brown color all right the next set here is the scaling tools so you can scale in individual axis points and you can you know, have preset amounts that you want to scale it by you can lock link all of these together so they'll maintain an aspect ratio or you can unlink them so if you can scale in, in any one axis. Uh, so let's go ahead and scale this. We can look here Y is our up and down direction so if we want to make this a certain size say I want to make them 10 inches tall I can do that and now my working dimensions inches over here so I'll make him 10 inches tall and I've got a fairly decent size for demonstration purposes of how you can scale models up, slice them up, and then create them. So that's the tools on this first scaling toolbar. So let's move on to the slicing toolbar here. All right, when the slicing toolbar opens up, we've got uh, several sliders that open up here. You'll notice the green slicing plane that appears on the screen. Uh, this is where you're actually going to be making cuts to the model. And with these sliders, can move it in any direction you want to be able to slice this model exactly 
however you want to. So let's this uh, depth plane here. So right now it's set at a default of 1.5 inches thick. And so depending on what thickness of material you're going to be cutting or carving on, uh, on a CNC system, you'll, you'll want to set that, that board thickness to this. Or you can set it to whatever else you want uh, just by clicking on the edit tool and typing in a dimension. And that will give it its specific uh, slicing depth for for each slice here. These sliders here, let's go ahead and reset them to zero. We'll notice that this model is slightly at an angle, so when it was originally des designed, it wasn't created at a uh, global facing forward. It was a little bit off, which is not a big deal because we can just kind of spin our slicing plane around so that we get kind of a perpendicular cut evenly on the front here and then we just simply select the cut button and it removes that front part totally as its own separate slice. So then we can work from this model and it maintains the angle of the slice for the second one in case I want to just slice in the same direction. And for the front of this face we are going to maintain that. We'll just cut that and get the second slice here. So now um, we're starting to get to the point where most of the details on the side here are probably not going to be able to cut much of that. You'll notice here this blue area is actually indicating uh, undercuts. So if you're coming from the front here, these are areas you're not going to be able to reach that are going to be undercut. You can actually adjust this through this tool up here, which gives you the ability to set the angle of your undercut. So if you're using a specifically angled tapered bit or something, you can set what that angle is to give you a better indication of where your undercuts are going to be. Um, but in this case, we're going to uh, move our slicing plane and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and rotate it just 90 degrees here. You can see we can get the side or we can rotate it another 90 or all the way 180 to the back. Let's go ahead and cut off the back. So we're not going to be able to get that from the side either. Now we can go ahead, we could make another slice from the back here, but most of this detail on the side of the head is all going to be reached from the side. I think all of this detail as well. We'll rotate back 90 degrees and we'll go ahead and look at cutting this off. You know, see behind the ear here, we're having undercuts. This is an area that the bit is just not going to be able to reach from this angle. So we'll have to kind of do some of that work by hand once we've cut all these pieces out and fit it back together. So let's cut that there. And then get the rest of this detail, let's cut that. All these have all been at that default one and a half inches that we set at the beginning. So let's rotate. There we go that other side here and let's cut that off and then get this next one so we get the rest of that detail and then we're left with just kind of a block here in the middle of this. The only part of this detail we really need is up here so we can rotate this plane here and even at an inch and a half we're not going to get all of it. Maybe we can tilt that a little bit. So we get that. It doesn't matter what the back end of that is. Just tilt that off and cut that out. So we're left with just this kind of block in the middle, which we don't actually need to cut. Uh, this piece here will um, easily be filled with any piece of material that we need to for assembling this thing. So we'll come back here and we can look at inspect all of our slices, make sure there isn't anything else that we need to do to them. And make sure that the green plane is behind them and this this indicator here is showing our Z direction and that's the direction we need facing forward on all of these. So we'll go through and look at them, make sure Z is facing forward. And there's our top piece. Go ahead and move on to the next window here. 
where we uh, export them. So click on that, select export. We've got all of our models selected here. Uh, and then you simply just indicate where you want them to go. I browse to a folder if you have a setup default. And then click export. And uh, the files will export. And it'll tell you when they're complete. And then you have all of your STL files exported back out as individual slices uh, that you can then lay out whatever program you're using to output.